Hey friends, it's Anjali here. It's Tuesday, June 15th. Welcome to the Missions Changed My Life show by Global Hope India with your host Kevin White. This is the podcast where we say yes to God's call to go make Christ known in India and around the world. On Friday, July 2nd, Kevin will be sharing a powerful message from God's word entitled God guides, God provides. God guides, God provides. I hope you'll join us for this international live broadcast from the USA via Zoom, YouTube or Facebook at 10 a.m. Eastern Time on Friday, July 2nd. Details at kevinwhite.us. We'll see you there. Okay, now here's your host, Kevin White. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much, Anjali, for that warm welcome. We're so glad to have everyone in the audience. Courtney, we're at 119 different countries. I know, it keeps going up. Yeah, it continues. So we welcome you, everyone around the world. Obviously, USA is a big listener. India is a huge listener. Thank you for everyone in India listening. But we have friends in Afghanistan and Iran, all throughout the Middle East, into Africa, Asia, uh, Russia, all around the world, Canada, back in the North America. So welcome, everyone. We have a great guest on the show today. We're so excited to have Emily from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania on the call today. Emily, welcome. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So if you're not watching on YouTube, just know that the video's there. We'd love for you to come over. I'm actually waving at you right now. And so our co-host Courtney is going to be diving into in, in, uh, Emily's trip <laughs> in just a moment. Mm-hmm. Um, but we want to welcome you to the show. If you're listening on uh, Apple Podcasts, please go over and leave a five-star review. That would help us out a whole lot or on Spotify. But Just sit back and listen as Emily shares how God has used missions to change her life. Courtney, thank you for being the co-host, as always. Let's dive in. It is my honor. Yeah, let's hear. Yeah, let's hear how God has worked in your life, Emily. Um, We Before we hit record, we found out that you went to Hyderabad, which is amazing. Love Hyderabad, special place in my heart. So what was the purpose of your team? Um, And I guess, did you go anywhere else or was it just in Hyderabad? And I guess the answer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we mostly stuck around Hyderabad. Um, and we, okay. the partner that we worked with over there was the John foundation and Asha Jyoti, um, which was amazing. I, I really loved their organization mm-hmm. and getting to meet um, all the people there, father John and, and his family and, and all the people that we got mm-hmm. to meet over there. Um, and so we specifically were um, sent over to be uh, ministering with some of the children in the orphan orphanages over there, and then also the children's homes, um, and also the women's homes as well for the, for the girls. And so um, what we did was we did sort of like a Bible school program for the children. Uh, we went during the summertime. I don't know if that's relevant, but we went over the summertime. And so we got to play with them and have Bible stories with them. We acted out some stories for them. And then when it came to doing some programming with uh, the women and the women's homes, we also did some sharing. Uh, There were a lot of women on our team, myself, of course, being one of them, as well as my mentor, Danette, who went along with me. And we got to share our testimonies with some of these women and and really minister to them and pray over them, which was amazing as well. Uh, And we got to have a lot of fun while, while, you know, learning from from everyone and, and the praise, the praise times were some of my favorite. We got to, to sing and dance with all of them. And they, the children did their own sort of performance for us as well, which was super fun. Um, they're all super talented individuals. Mm-hmm. They are. So a little bit, I guess, because I don't know you personally. Had you been to India before? Had you been out of the country previously to going? I had not. Actually, that was my first time out of the country. <laughs> it's actually You're still brave. my only time being out of the country um, because I've been busy with school and stuff since then. But right. um, yeah, it was incredible. It was really eye opening um, in a lot of different ways. And I'm sure we'll get into that. But it was a great. Yeah. First well, why don't. Yes. Yeah, since we're on the, since we're on that thought process, what were some big adjustments or funny stories upon getting to India? <laughs> so the funny thing for me was. <laughs> one of the first days we were there, we were in the city for a minute and we there was still like American chain pizza. 
And I was not expecting that. It was very different. Like it tastes different, Mm -hmm. but I just didn't expect that for some reason. It was so funny. We just walked in and I think it was maybe Papa John's or something. Mm -hmm. And and we just walked and got this pizza to share as a team and get to know each other. That was like our first bonding dinner Mm -hmm. together. And I just was not expecting that at all. And then we (laughs) ate this pizza and it was good, but it was something about the sauce is very different. I can't quite remember Mm -hmm. it. It was almost sweeter I think I'm yeah not sure. mm-hmm. but it was it was an interesting experience I was kind of expecting um I don't know I guess not expecting the chain restaurants to be there but I thought that was kind of funny at first but it was nice to see how it was you know a little bit different like they kind of make it their own in their own way but right um yeah and then that was that was sort of a funny thing but one thing that was um really eye-opening for me was when you're going through like the city or the more built-up areas of Hyderabad, you can see some of these really grand homes um, Mm -hmm. and in their shadow quite literally are like these small built from whatever materials they can find shanties essentially Um, and it really really struck me and it (laughs) made me quite literally breathless for a moment to see sort of that wealth disparity that is so dark in India how there are some people just struggling so much um, and living quite literally in the shadow of, of some people that are, I don't remember the exact percentage, but the upper echelon in India is actually quite wealthy. So it's, it's just that really stark contrast that I was not expecting and really took my breath away for a moment. Um, but, and that's really sort of led me down a path. I was a sophomore in high school or in college rather, whenever I went on this trip. Mm -hmm. And so that was a really formative time for me in my education um, and and deciding sort of where I wanted to go career-wise later on. And it was already something that through just organizations at school, I had started to dive into sort of disparities that exist around the world and how we can combat those and how we can intervene on behalf of other people and really try to make a difference in their lives. And so seeing that Um, And the different cultural perspective from being in India, of course, we still have disparities that exist here in the United States as well. But even abroad, you know, we should still care about our brothers and sisters over over there, of course. And so to see those disparities at work and I think I just came back with a renewed sense of purpose for, yeah, I'm on the right track. I should, you know, keep investigating ways in which disparities and wealth and and health and all of those things uh, can be intervened on by by people that, for whatever reason, are at at a higher place of privilege in their lives. Uh, like myself, you know, I, I'm blessed with, you know, being born into a family that is middle class and doing well. And, mm-hmm. you know, I have the opportunity to go get an education, which might hopefully someday allow me to go and continue doing work that will address disparities for other people. And that's what I hope that this all leads to but that was definitely a really eye-opening moment for me when I went over to India yeah that's a great point I mean it's it's hard to even describe to someone that hasn't been to India because I don't know of a city I mean I know we have big cities and I know we have the homelessness and uh, big cases of homelessness in, in different cities but it's really hard to put into words the pictures that you see of these mansions and then you see a family of 10 under a blue tarp and they're cooking outside, but I mean, and they're happy or they, they're, they're surviving. And it just, it's not like they're in the middle of a pandemic. It's like, this is just life. This is that, you know, and even now I'm sure with the pandemic, that disparity is, we're seeing that now um, globally, you know, we're kind of seeing India is getting magnified in this time. And so that's a really good point. And it's really cool to see that we're, so were you already studying, um, you know, what you were saying, like to help um, kind of with the research or, or did this trip really like did you come home and say you know what I got to do something so I think previously I had been I started becoming involved in an organization at school that was specifically looking at health disparities in different populations mm-hmm. um, and I think I just came back with a renewed sense of this is the direction I want to go so I just continued to be more involved in that organization and I think it was after mm-hmm. the trip around the beginning of my junior year then following the trip I really decided that public health was something that I really wanted to invest time in. And so that's what I'm currently in my master's program for. Um, And I really am focusing on the health equity aspect of public health and how we can make things more equitable for all sorts of populations that are disadvantaged or marginalized or whatever the case may be. Hey, it's Anjali. We will be right back. 
Kevin White is an international speaker and best-selling author who loves helping people everywhere to prosper in God's presence. A serial entrepreneur, Kevin has helped start hundreds of businesses, non-profits and churches. As founder and executive director of Global Hope India, Kevin has traveled over 1 million miles to 27 different countries, speaking to thousands of audiences throughout India and the world. Visit KevinWhite.us for Kevin's books, one-minute motivation series and podcasts. Visit KevinWhite.us today. For over 20 years, Global Hope India has been empowering the church in India as they make Christ known. Visit GlobalHopeIndia.org and learn how you can pray, give and go. Over 1,000 people have served on one of GHI's short-term mission trips to India. Now you can join a virtual mission team to India. Visit GlobalHopeIndia.org today because everyone should have access to hear about Jesus. Okay, now back to the show. So, yeah, I mean, you you basically answered my next question of how did missions change your life? But it sounds like maybe it didn't, God didn't give you a complete 180, but just a, a confirmation or an assurance of this is what you're supposed to be doing. And now I'm showing you a big picture of what I'm doing. And so it's really cool that you're still on that track and making a difference. So thank you for, for working in that line of work and doing all the research so that we can get vaccines and feel safer and, you know, pray for our brothers and sisters to do the same. But so what does it look like on a, on a day to day basis coming back from the mission trip? I know it's been four years, but how did it change just how you went through your days? I think I also had a renewed sense of like internal happiness, understanding that it was, that's something else that I should really say struck me. And and I would encourage anyone that is thinking about going to India, you should definitely do it. The people over there are so happy. I mean, even people that are, you know, in what we might consider a very disadvantaged situation, um, they're just so happy and they're lively, you know, their culture is so vibrant. And so, I really walked away from that as well with a sense of like companionship with those people. And, you know, I still talk to people that I went on the mission with and I still actually talked to uh, one of the women that was over there with Asha, the Asha Jyoti organization. And they're just such happy people. Um, and so I think I walked away from that with an appreciation for, you know, the small things in life and just being able to make human connections no matter where you go. is really cool as well. Yeah, that's important. In America, I know we're speaking, it sounds like we're from similar backgrounds, just with middle class, being able to wear blinders, not having to really think too far. But when you do, it's kind of like, ooh, there's a lot of people suffering. But it's really, it is cool to see that how relationships are valued in India um, and how, and then you come home and it's like, well, why do we put so much stuff in front of people? But um, so that's it's a good contrast um, to take away from it. That's huge. What would you define if you could put one word to that trip what would it be oh wow one word that's hard um oh man i mean life changing i think like life life changing yeah. that's a hyphenated word right so that still counts as one word it counts. it's a really it was a really great a really great experience and um yeah, like I said, I think I made some lifelong friendships with people. And I think that um, one thing that also really struck me was I think my view of missions and my approach to missions that are um, most effective was really also changed by this trip because I really loved that Global Hope India specifically partners with organizations already in India. And I think that that was something that Maybe it was just me being, you know, a naive 19 year old at the time. But I think a lot of missions that um, I had heard of before were more like, you know, we're going to go over and do what what we assume that these people need. And, and I think it's all well intentioned, of course. But um, I thought it was really great and and sort of novel that Global Hope India goes over. They partner with people that are already on the ground in India Mm -hmm. and the the communities in India are telling you what they what they would need from you. Mm -hmm. And then you're able to provide that directly for them in partnership with them. And I think that's something else that was so eye opening for me. And it it sort of changed 
how I view missions and how they can be most effective. And, and it, again, led right into sort of my own path with, with public health and, and doing community-based intervention and understanding how, in my opinion anyway, that's what I love to focus on, you know, when I'm doing my own, you know, research proposals and what have you. Community-based research and community-based intervention is really how we can get on the ground and give people what they need by asking them and by living alongside them and doing what we can to really be culturally appropriate also in our interventions, you know, not wanting to step on anybody's toes and change anything about their culture or who they are. We just want to, you know, make sure that those disparities aren't impacting your health, your well-being, your spiritual well-being, those sorts of things. Yeah, I mean, that's a great point that a lot of people probably haven't thought about if you haven't gone on mission trips or many mission trips of we, we used to have a book that we would ask everyone to read and it was called When Helping Hurts. And it just has that idea of, are you going to go and empower the, the missionaries there? Because we're all called to be missionaries. You know, we're not, it's not all the white people, even though for 50, 100 years, white missionaries have kind of been the thing. Um, and so, yeah, I, I love that we get to empower missionaries and church planners and women and men in India. And we've seen in the past year, since we can't go to India God is still working through them. God did not need us there, but he chose to send us there. And so it's just really cool to hear your story, Emily. And, and really, I mean, I just, I love getting to do this and meeting you, but also just getting to hear how God, I mean, you didn't have to go and he could use, he could have used anyone, but the fact that it changed your life when you did go. And so what would you tell someone who is thinking about going on a trip, obviously when they can or, or a virtual trip, um, what would you tell someone? I would say first and foremost, do it <laughs> and then just pray about it before you go. I mean, I think if it's your first time doing something like this, there's a healthy amount of nerves that probably comes with it. But I think that you just need to be willing to be open to what the experience has to show you because God's going to take you where you need to go. And you just need to trust in that process. I remember that prior to this trip, I had never done such a public sharing of my testimony before. And that was something that really made me a little bit frightened. Uh, I I feel like for some reason, as I've gotten older, I've actually gotten a little bit worse at public speaking. I feel like as a kid, I just let it all out. And then now in college, in my master's program, I don't look forward to that stuff as much for some reason. But um, that was one thing that while it scared me to do it initially, I did it. And then I felt so wonderful afterwards. Like, like God had done, had me do that for a reason. Um, and I, I had a couple of women come up to me afterwards and sort of related to me after speaking about my testimony and, and things like that. And that's, that connection is why I did that, why I was supposed to do that. And God will help you through it. You're not supposed to feel comfort all the time. Sometimes he'll take you out of your comfort zone, but mm -hmm. he'll help you through it. He won't leave you there on your own. So, yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That is great. Well, I just love listening and it helped me to reminisce over um, the beauty of short-term missions. We really missed that in 2020 and now in 2021, it'll come back. Uh, we will be going back to India uh, in the will of the Lord um, soon. Um, but uh, right now we're providing opportunities for virtual mission teams. And we're excited that hopefully Thousands of more people can be exposed to the John Foundation and other partners all throughout India mm -hmm. through our virtual opportunities. So I hope you'll go to our Go page and check that out. Um, Emily, I, I did a wordplay listening to you. You said uh, privilege comes with purpose. Uh, I love that, especially when there's been a conflict because of white privilege and things like that, uh, arrogance and, and things like that, that comes with privilege. But God plainly told Moses, I will bless you and make you a blessing. And um, to be blessed by God is certainly the highest privilege of mankind. And so for you to state it like that um, is just really mm -hmm. a great play of words, uh, use of words that, that privilege equals purpose. And that's one of the things that you found there. I also liked how you talked about internal happiness. Uh, I really long for everyone in the audience to hear those words and to just really realize that sometimes your environment, especially like in, in the USA, uh, where we do have such privilege and luxury here, uh, we can get cynical 
I mean, like right now, can cancel culture is a a reality culture, unfortunately. And we can get negative and you don't even realize you're negative until you go to India and you see such happy people and you realize, why am I so cynical? Why am I why do I why am I why am I negative? And I'm certainly not accusing you, Emily, of being negative before India, but you're exactly right. Sometimes we're under a cloud from from um, from just our environment of where we're living and where we're spending our time. And a short term mission trip can take us out of that cloud, good or bad, and really get us into um, another tra transformation from from any type of negativity to 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 internal happiness. I love, I love that. Would you just close out our show praying for the people in our audience to just be given that grace of internal happiness? And if that comes through a short term mission trip, let's pray that they'll say go. They'll say yes to God's call to go. Would you Absolutely. guide us in prayer? Okay, thank you. I would love to, yeah. Dear Lord, thank you so much for this day that you've given us. Thank you for the opportunity to come together and be together on this podcast. And for all the listeners, please keep them safe as they're going about their days. And if they're hearing a call from you right now, God, I pray that they feel empowered to respond to that call in whatever way that might be. And if it is through missions, I, I pray that you encourage them to step out of their comfort zones and try out something new. And Lord, I hope that you all, that everyone listening to this podcast also feels empowered to seek their own internal happiness, even if it is a counter cultural ideal or or space to be in right now i pray that we can all find that that place of peace through you lord and through our relationships with you and i thank you for all these things in jesus name amen 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 thank you emily thanks courtney great job pulling the trip out of emily yeah. and nice uh, job, let's, emily. let's all go to thank india um, whether you do it in yeah, person in I the years to, to come to. yeah or virtually <laughs> Uh, let's, let's pray, give, go for India. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you again next Tuesday here on Missions Change My Life. Thank you for listening to the Missions Change My Life show by Global Hope India with Kevin White. Find the complete archive of all episodes at kevinwhite.us or subscribe for free through your favorite podcast player and never miss an episode. This program is a copyright of Global Hope India, all rights reserved. Each week, we bring you a message of how God uses missions to bring real and lasting change through Jesus Christ. Join Global Hope India again next week for Missions Changed My Life with Kevin White. For missions Changed My Life with Kevin White.